Hello once again. Welcome to my broadcast. This is episode number 792. Yes, another new episode. And the topic today is have you ever been or have you recently been love bombed? What is it and what you should look out for because it ain't good ain't a good thing. Love bomb sounds like a great thing. It's not. So let me explain. Before I jump in, let me use myself so you know who I am and why I talk about this stuff. <laughs> why I want to check out my replays too. Um, my name is Barry Selby. Welcome to my broadcast. I am a best selling author of the book Fifty Ways to Love Your Lover. I'm an inspirational speaker and relationship and clarity, excuse me, a relationship and love expert helping women create balance in love, life and business. I'm also a passionate champion for the divine feminine, which is, informs, informs my work with women and also inspired these talks starting over two years ago called Messages from the Masculine Inspiring Your Feminine Heart. So today we're at episode 792. As I said, I've done a bunch of these now. And the topic today is about a topic called love bomb. And I recently read about it and it was just like, what? This is not like photobombing, by the way, although in some ways there's some parallels. So let me explain what love bombing is. And I'm realizing as I look back at my own history, I've been a, a both a victim and a, and a um, protagonist, I think, of both aspects of this. So let me explain it. So love bomb, love bomb is a recently ad, um, added term to the vocabulary of love challenges like ghosting, submarining, boomeranging. There's so many out there. Anyway, love bombing is the idea of what I would call um, temporary infatuation. That's the best way I can put it, because what it really is about is falling in love so quickly, and it's this love at first sight thing, but not really, where it's an absolutely amazing, like upfront experience, and then it disappears. There's as a tie-in to narcissistic behavior, as well as to, an ex to a slight extent, sociopathic behavior, but I'm gonna get into psychological pieces of it. But what it means though is that sometimes you get caught up in the euphoria and the chemistry of an incredibly addictive and temporary or transitory relationship experience. Now hands up if you've been through one of those before. I have, and again, I've been a victim of this. I've also been a protagonist or a, a perpetrator of this. So I'm speaking from both sides and innocence, <laughs> ignorance is sometimes bliss, but not always the right thing. So let me explain a bit more about it and you know what to do in response to it. The challenge with love bombing is it is it's almost like everything makes your dreams come true. You feel so received and uplifted and connected and listened to and and entertained and inspired that you think everything's perfect. And that's the trap. Because it it's kind of like when well, I said not the gilded cage, because you're not being trapped. But it's this appearance of something being perfect, but it's really not. Being love bombed basically is being courted with no destination. It's being enthralled without being followed through. It's like having sex with no benefits. I need to, I need to throw that one in there because some people know that experience more directly. So the thing about love bombing is it's not something that's necessarily a, well, I say dysfunction. As I mentioned, let's just say this. There are certain, in the psychological discussion, narcissistic behavior, tends to have love, love bombing in its toolkit. Although with a true narcissist, they don't let you go. So they'll, they'll do it initially so you get to, so sucked in. There we go, that's the piece. <laughs> it shows up this way. So a narcissistic style of approaching relationships, and I don't mean the selfish style of narcissism, I'm talking about the relationship and the interpersonal behavior of narcissists. And narcissists will basically come at you and court you and enthrall you like a, like a love bomb, basically. Will get you so, um, hypnotized, it's probably a good way of putting it, with their charms and their way of being, that you're falling deeply and immediately and quickly in love with them. And then once they've got you, that's when they start energetically sucking you dry. The, the, the narcissist, the way I describe narcissism in a lot of ways, is almost like having an energy vampire sucking your life force away from you. Not pretty, but the thing is you get so hypnotized and bedazzled and enamored by their initial courtship that you don't even necessarily notice they're already doing it to you until it's too late. So in a way, love bombing is a sign. It's, it's almost like the siren's call. If you remember the old, um, it was a Moby Dick, it was, um, I forget which book that came out of. Anyway, the si if you know the siren song, the siren call of the old um, stories, there basically were the um, apparently beautiful mermaid sitting on the rocks that would sing to the sailors in the, in, the, in the open seas and it would actually draw them in so they crashed their, boat, their, their boats on the rocks 
but it turned out that the mermaid appearance were actually ghosts and were, were pulling these sailors to their deaths to take their souls. Lovely stuff. Love bombing energetically is a similar thing where you're being sucked in and pulled into the rocks where you're basically getting destroyed because the person who's pulling you in is going to take your energy and steal your light, so to speak. And you end up being in a place where you're actually screwed over. Yes, it is interesting, Sarah. It's, this, is, this, is, this is deceptively nice, but painfully experiential when you go through it. So just a sidebar slightly. The love bombing... Oh, by the way, side, sidebar again, Sarah. I should have. I didn't. I didn't message you. My broadcast yesterday was a, was another follow up to our talk on Wednesday. So if you haven't chance to watch my yesterday's broadcast, you might want to. Okay, back on track. <laughs> side business on on my broadcast. Love bombing in is can be innocent as well. So as I mentioned in the past, I both been a victim of it and a perpetrator of it, because what happens is sometimes we get so excited when we meet somebody, we're like, oh, this is the one. This is the one. This is the one. And three months later, we know, realize it's not the one. So love bombing has a, a, a presentation or a flavor where it's not necessarily painful. Oh, of course. I, I, it was all about being authentic. Um, and something else. Which I, let's say it escapes me right now. But anyway, staying on track of this one. <coughs> so the, the, the innocent flavor that kind of shows up with people who have a experience of love bombing is unfortunate but not bad the challenge is though is that same um, pretty gift wrap also contains gifts that are not pleasant which again is the narcissistic um, energetic theft of your energy so okay I've given you enough fear enough <laughs> worries what about let me give you the uh, the, sol the solution in terms of basically the warning signs since you now know what I'm talking about and you know the sense of being so caught up in it the simplest thing you can do is take your time. The thing about this photo, photo, photo bombing, love bombing, photo bombing, love. I got the term switched up. The thing about love bombing is it's a very short-term thing, either to pull you in or just to to hook you up and then drop you. If you take your time, you'll either outlast it or it will turn into real love. So the key and the solution to love bombing is as a whole. First of all, is to do your best. It's like it's almost being like a drunken fog. Pull yourself out of the fog and see more clearly. First of all, you might see that it's so, there's so nothing there. Don't even bother. Secondly, is to take the time, spread it out. In like, um, keep your own life running separately, so you have time and you do other things. So you're not focused on this one person all the time because that's the other trap. People fall into this mix, this this cauldron of toxic love by being so enamored by the one person they drop everything else around them that's actually a, that's a is that a chapter in my book there's a chapter in my book about that where basically you drop everything else yeah it is a chapter in my book <laughs> i'd remember for a second about where you drop everything else for your relationship part of this love bombing is that it's so addictive it's the it's the it's the busiest thing in the room so nothing else comes close to it so you tend to drop everything else to jump into it <laughs> yeah i know yeah you don't have to be photo bombed than love bombed exactly sir yes Oh, by the way, if you're watching this on YouTube, it was Facebook Live first, which is why I'm talking to somebody you can't see. I forgot to mention that. Yeah, exactly. Photobombing over love bombing any day. True indeed. Um, <laughs> although some people are really annoying at that too. Not as bad, but just annoying. Anyway, so take your time and also like clear yourself of the energetics so you can see more clearly. Love bombing is not necessarily intentionally toxic but it tends to be painful in the after effects. So focusing on what's real for you, staying present to what you're really about and make your life a priority, even though you're being so swamped by love from this other person, again, love bombed, it's important that you take care of yourself. So my, uh, my um, simple advice here is to make sure you see it clearly, take your time and make sure that nothing takes away from you sometimes you feel like it's worth and I've had a whole other talk series about the, about the, the settling for less than you deserve if you're in a place where you feel like the other person makes you feel better than you normally feel proceed with caution this is one of those topics that there's a lot of aspects to it and, and, and facets of because it's tempting to think oh this person makes you feel so great that's wonderful but see the thing about that is 
it's usually false because the thing is, if they make you feel great, feel better than you already are, then that means they have control over what you feel because they made you feel better than you really are, which means they can also make you feel worse than you already are. You don't really want that, do you? So you want somebody that lets you be free to be with them and you feel that way. And, and, and the challenge with this is it's sometimes very um, intoxicating. Of course, you know the word intoxicating includes the word toxic in the middle of it. So intoxicating isn't good either. I know I'm dispelling a lot of these romance rumors, these romance thoughts. People are going, but I want to be so romantic, and it's all the folk, all fairy tales. Well, get over yourself. <laughs> Love is a wonderful thing, but it's also work. It also requires focus, diligence, and for me, trust. And you can't have trust unless you build it authentically with each other and with yourselves. Okay, I'm going off tangent here. So let me get back to the fine the thing about love bombing once and for all. Patience is a virtue in this context, and seeing clearly, discerning what's really going on, and taking care of yourself first, a priority, so you don't have that happen to you. I'm already thinking what I need to share about that. So for those of you doing dealing with this, I am going to put an invitation in the comments for a discovery session with me, a conversation with a, a complimentary clarity conversation that we can talk because I want to find out what's going on and I can probably help you get some direction, some clarity and some, and some um, focus on where you want to go. I'll put my book in the comments too because I did mention the chapter of the book that I talked about earlier. Um, there'll be a couple of links in there too. Yes, okay, another piece. I also, I believe, this is not, this is not research, this is my belief, is that love bombing also happens to people when they're not necessarily really owning their own self-love. And I know it's a, know it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a, a direct link to go plug my self-love practice, which I will put in the comments. Yes, I will. But the thing about it is, is that we often think that the love's going to come out from out there. And this is part of the trap of codependency, which I've talked about so many times before. If you're not caught up in that codependent paradigm, then love bombing won't hit you so easily. Because the love bombing is almost this temptation to say, oh, I feel better because of that person. As I mentioned, that person will make me feel better than I already feel. And that trap, that... Um, well, I think another word for trap that that invitation <laughs> is going to keep you in a place where you'll actually be unable to own your own space anymore because you're so caught up in the other person's energy again, intoxicated, toxic that their control of you will be overriding your own control of yourself and not about, I'm not, big, I'm not, I don't talk about control much, but it's that trap we fall into, you know. <laughs> I'm not rubbing you fantasies. But see, the thing about love is love is not fantasy. Love is real. So there, so that's what's left. Love is real. I'm not rubbing you with fantasies. Thank you, Sarah. <laughs> what I'm saying is love is real. Let's get real. Let's have real conversations, real compassion, real connection, real intimacy. That's the fun stuff. The fantasies are all they are is fantasies you can enjoy the fantasies but remember that's what they are it's not possible to live a fantasy it's like walking off a cliff and hoping that it will support you so what is real huh. real connection real honesty real authenticity that's, that was actually my talk yesterday about authenticity that's what being real is is transparent and so clear in who you are that you become a light to draw in the love you really want that's a whole other topic that I talked about before but I'll talk about it again maybe over the weekend because I want to stay on tra track with the love bombing here, because that's also one of the seeds of this codependency, which I have an issue with too. Because codependency isn't real either, in the sense that codependency is where we fall into the thing, the feeling that somebody else is going to take care of us, somebody's going to make us feel better, somebody's going to make us feel loved. The problem is that when you're in that position, that means you give them all the power to give you the love or to take the love away, and you don't want to, you wouldn't want to be in a relationship where somebody can withdraw the love. You can be interdependent. That's another conversation. Again, I've talked about that before. It's also in my book. So again, I'll put the link in the comments. But love really is a self-generated practice. This is one of the biggest fallacies out in the world is that we think that it's other people's love that makes us feel better. Not true. This is going to blow some people's minds. When people love us, what it's doing is it's creating resonance with the love inside of us. And in fact, we can't be loved any more than we can love ourselves. And someone can keep giving us love. And just, that's the sidebar into the five love languages too. But love really is a self-generated source first. The way to be in an amazing relationship is to be loving in relationship with yourself first. And then with somebody else, when they do the same thing, then the love can join together and then you can have an extremely potent, powerful, and expansive relationship. But if you're looking for codependency, this is the wrong place. 
<laughs> I'm not a proponent. I will help you stamp it out if you're willing to learn the lesson. So what is real is real connection, real love, real authentic, intimate, trust, and passion. So that, that sort of answers your question, Sarah, I think. So having said all that, um, watch out for the love bombs. They go off all around you, especially when it's somebody you meet on a dating app or you go at somebody in a club. You might go immediately going, this is the one. Maybe, maybe not. Be willing to have a chance to do some due diligence, so to speak, and reference. I know you're down with love. Yeah, we, we talk about that. So I'm glad you are, Sarah. Thank you for that feedback. So um, having said all that, I thank you for watching. Again, I'll put some links in the comments because I think it's relative. The Self Love will be in there, of course, my book and the Discover session for those who want to reach out to get some help. So those three things will be in the comments. This is my daily Facebook Live, as I mentioned. It's on my personal page, which is facebook.com forward slash Barry Selby. Every day, 5 p.m. Pacific time, right here. The replays, since you've never seen me before, you can find this on my business page on Facebook, which is facebook.com forward slash Barry Selby dot author. Please like my page and you can watch all my broadcasts there. And thirdly, the replays are on my YouTube channel, which is also Barry Selby. Please subscribe to my YouTube channel. There's a playlist on there called Messages from the Masculine. So, hi Libby, saw you joining me right at the back in the broadcast. You have to watch from the beginning. Um, this is a juicy topic and uh, I hope it makes some sense to you. I do invite your questions, thoughts, and comments below. You can let me know when you're finished what you think of this. Um, and with that, be careful out there. Love is real, but the love bombs are fake and they're not good for you. So with that, I thank you for watching. I'll see you again tomorrow, same time, same channel. And as always, I invite you to take care of yourself. I'll see you again soon. Bye.